Hi, and welcome to Rise Up. We're so glad you're joining us again today. And today I have the lovely Candace Starr with me again. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. But today we also have another special guest, Apostle Catherine Crick, and today she will be sharing on revival. So please stay tuned for this. Apostle Catherine, we're so honored to have you on the show today. Thank you. I'm so blessed to be here. Yeah, we know our, our audience is going to be really blessed hearing you teach about revival. Apostle Catherine Crick is the lead pastor and founder of 5F Church in LA. She is a powerful revivalist. She's seeing revival all over the country, miracles, signs, wonders, deliverance, healing, all moving through her ministry very powerfully. She's so passionate about revival, about seeing personal revival in our own hearts, as well as in the nation and the country surrounding. We're so excited to have her share with you guys today. Yes, welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, we're so excited. Your last show was incredible. Oh, so we're honored God. to have you back, Apostle yeah. Catherine. Thank you. Today, I wanted to touch on uh, revival. You have a powerful anointing on your life for revival. So can you tell us how that started? Yes. So um, I first encountered the power of God about six years ago. I was a lukewarm Christian my whole life. Uh, and then one day, I went to a little house church, and that's where I encountered the power of God for the first time. I saw demons cast out for the first time. I saw people be healed. I received a prophetic word for the first time in my life, and it opened up my spiritual eyes just with a simple prophetic word that God was really with me and knew me and loved me, intimately yes. me. Amen. And it set me on fire for Jesus. I always wanted to be on fire for him. I always loved him, but I wasn't in love with him. Yeah. It was like I believed in him, but I didn't know that he was real and know he loved me so much. So I was set on fire that day. I had always wanted to be surrendered to God and I kept trying, but I was in lukewarm churches and it just like, I needed the power. Now I get it. Now I know, you know, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Yeah. So Jesus is not a matter of talk, but of power. Mm -hmm. And like, really, you have not met the real Jesus or at least the fullness of him. Yeah until you encounter his power. He, that is him. His power is him. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. healer, the deliverer, the passionate love that touches you tangibly, that baptizes you in fire. Mm -hmm. So I was baptized in the Holy Spirit one month later and mm -hmm. I was moved to surrender for the first time from my heart. That's all I wanted, my biggest mm -hmm. desire. And um, from that day, I've never been the same. It's, just, it's been a lasting surrender. Mm -hmm. Rather than before, I would go to church service after church service um, and say the sinner's prayer, raise my hand <laughs> again and again, but there would be no change. And I still had one yes. foot in the world. But from that day that I encountered the power of God, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I really surrendered from my heart and it really stayed. Mm -hmm. I needed God's anointing to yes. set me on fire. So that was my personal revival yes. that day. And from that day, I hungered so much for everyone around me. My, I had so many Christian family and friends who never encountered the power of God. And my heart burned for them to encounter Jesus like I had, because I saw that I was full of joy and peace and <laughs> every day, and I yes. knew God's love, finally. And I knew that they didn't, and I knew that they were just how I was before. And I just wanted them to really know Jesus mm -hmm. and be set on fire. Mm -hmm. So. Nine months later, I actually encountered the, I went to a conference where a prophet prophesied to me, said that I was called to be an apostle. Long story short, I didn't want this, but I wanted God's will more than my own. So I accepted that call. Nine months later, God called me to start Fivefold Church. So out of my comfort zone as well <laughs> to start a church. Um, and it was so out of my, so uncomfortable. It was really my weakness, but God gave me strength. He gave me the ability. He gave me words to speak. And um, I was really in a wilderness season for about four and a half years. God wow. spoke about a year later that there, there was a prophet who prophesied in LA where I was at our church, revivals now. God has mm -hmm. heard America's prayers for revival for so many years. And he has answered them. And he says, God sent me from far away, from a different country, to prophesy this to you, that God has heard wow. your prayers and revival for America is now. It is no longer the time to pray mm. for revival. Revival is now. Wow. And you know when you really hear God, whether yeah. it's a dream, a personal word that God speaks to you, or through a prophet, you know, mm. when you really hear him, you know it's him. Yeah. There's no doubt. And there's this conviction that comes in you that you have to keep his word, yeah. believe in his word. And so God really mm. spoke to me. I'm calling you to carry this word, to be like Mary who carried Jesus, you know, yes. like 
Nobody saw that she had Jesus in her, but she knew. And she had a responsibility. She pondered these things in her heart, the Bible says. She made sure she held onto that promise and kept it safe until the world could see. And so I felt God was calling me to that. So I kept declaring, revivals now, revivals now. But from there, it's like God opened the floodgates. And then so many people hunger for freedom, hunger for a touch of God. And we saw that hunger as they flew, they started flying across the country. Mm. And so to encounter God at the park, at our church, at Five Hole Church. And so from uh, the second to last week in May, there was 70 people, it had grown to 70 in like two months, mm. from thir- 25 to 70. And then the very next week, 300 came. Wow. And ever since May 30th till now, which now it's, we're in January now, people have, flown across the country and even different countries, Turkey, Romania, Dominican Republic, the UK last week, um, uh, Colombia, two different people, all different, uh, Tahiti. (laughs) Um, Every single week without fail, people have flown in and there's been hundreds that have come to Revival in the Park at Fivefold Church in LA every Sunday since that day. And then hunger started spreading across the country. I started receiving invitations to go minister in parks in their people's cities where they just hungered for mm. revival and in churches. And so August of this past year, um, I started traveling every single week. I've been traveling, uh, ministering at revival events mm. across the country, across America. And then it's begun to be international now. A couple weeks ago, I was in Tanzania. In a couple weeks, I'll be in Dubai. Come on. A couple weeks later, I'll be in um, Amsterdam near in near in Netherlands near Amsterdam and the UK is coming up in Canada and Brazil and other yeah. countries this year. So all I can say is revival is now. Yes. 100%. Yes. And yes. I knew it was coming, but it's beyond my expectations completely. God does exceedingly abundantly beyond whatever we can ask, think, think dream, imagine, whatever we mm-hmm. dream about the promise given. It's yeah. more. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. You know, you said a couple things that just really hit home, and it was one that you said your personal revival started yeah. in that initial meeting. But then also you said there's this hunger of people mm-hmm. who are coming from these other countries because they're hungry for revival. They don't have it where they are. So what would your advice be to someone who is seeking the personal revival? They have this hunger, but they don't really know what's next, or they don't know mm-hmm. how to get that baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to catch um, the power of deliverance. They don't know how to catch the power of healing. Like, what would you say to those people who are just hungering for more and are seeking that personal revival. Well, the, the Bible in the Bible it says, God says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So that's key to find God, to find the fullness of Jesus, not just what you hear in church, the religious stuff maybe, you know, the fullness of him. You have to seek him. And not just seek him, but seek him with all of your heart. And that's my testimony because I was a Christian my whole life. And then just this hunger, I just felt like I wanted more of him and I wanted to surrender and I wanted a relationship. And so I just started seeking him more and more and more. And that seeking, that hunger led me to finally encountering Mm. his power. It was a little house church. I had to be childlike by the way, um, because it was, it was out of my comfort zone. I was going to a mega church that didn't believe in the power of God. Mm. And this friend invited me to this like living room church in a tiny oh, wow. house and people were from different cultures and I go in and everyone's speaking in tongues and I had never been around that before I didn't even know that was a gift I could have and you know I had to be open so you need to be open humble childlike to receive the fullness of Jesus you have to so seek him and seek him with an open heart there will be there will be the devil's lies there will be people who are skeptics there will be Pharisees today that will try to stop you from seeking God, just like they did in the times of Jesus. I mean, there were Pharisees warning people on the road of probably when people were going to Jesus's meetings. There were probably Pharisees trying to say, you know, he's really using demonic powers, casting, (laughs) using the powers of Satan, cast out demons. That's what the Pharisees said. But Jesus says, you can't cast out demons with the power of Satan. So you have to be aware of the devil's schemes and you have to have an open childlike heart. I didn't come there with a guard up. I came there humble and open. That's real Mm -hmm. wisdom is to be childlike. When you have this guard up and you try to protect yourself, that is where you you put blinders on yourself. 
because Jesus says, I've hidden these things from those who are proud. So you're making Jesus to hide these things from you. Wow. wow. God's doing a new thing now. Yeah. And so we have to be open, childlike, and beware. Yeah. You know, don't let anything take you away from receiving all that Jesus wants to give you. Yeah. And he is where his power is. He is where his power is. It says in the book of Acts that when people were sick and demon possessed, they would bring them near apostle Peter so that his shadow would touch them. So they, that's what they did. To encounter God's power, they went where anointing was, where they had heard testimonies of people receiving miracles. Yeah. It was simple. <laughs> so that's the answer today. You want revival? Find where God's power is. Seek where God's power is moving. Seek where anointing's flowing, like through Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul. Simply position yourself, get under the shadow, and God's gonna touch you. He's gonna heal you, deliver you, baptize you in the Holy Spirit, give you encounters. There's been people at our revival meetings that they go to Jesus. They go to the heaven and have an encounter with Jesus where Jesus speaks to them. There was a gentleman that came to a revival in the park and he didn't even wanna come. His mother dragged him, he's a teenager. He was depressed in his room. His mom drags him. I start praying for the whole family and demons start trembling in him. And so like, he was convicted, you know, like, whoa, this is real, this is Jesus. And so he renounces, because that's a key to being set free. He renounced, like, he renounced depression and other things. And, um, and then I commanded those demons to go and as, they left him and he fell back with the power of God when I spoke that. And then he was on the ground for a while, for a few minutes. And I continued praying for the family. He stands up. He takes off his glasses and he says, I couldn't see before, but now wow. I can see. I don't need my glasses anymore. Oh, yeah, and then he shares a testimony after church that when, when, he, when he was on the ground, he went to the throne room of heaven mm. and, he, and he saw seraphim and he didn't know what they were. He said, I saw these creatures and they had uh, six different, they had different, all these different wings. And I, you know, as the scriptures talks about seraphim, he was describing wow. it exactly like that. And he says, what are these creatures? And G Jesus, he says, Jesus told me they're seraphim. And mm. then he says that there was dirt coming out of his eyes, literal dirt. And Jesus says, I'm, I'm wiping away wow. the dirt from your eyes. You're going to be able to see now. Praise. And he could see now. I'm wiping away your tears, Jesus said. And Jesus even mm. gave him scripture in, in heaven. Like uh, the Bible says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Mm. And so anyways, he's sharing this testimony. And now he's preaching. He's speaking the scripture wow. and he's preaching with passion. So we see Jesus take him yeah. from depressed, mm. not even coming, wanting to come to church, mm. to set free, healed, go to the throne room, talk with <laughs> yeah. Jesus, and now become a preacher yeah. in a matter of wow. a few hours, yeah. wow. an hour even. So wow. that was just being where God's power is. Just position yeah. yourself and mm. God's going to touch you yeah. and do more Amen. than you imagined. Amen. Amen. Well, let me ask you this. As you're traveling, leading revivals and doing revivals, what is the one mark of revival? Like what's the one characteristic that you see continually? Well, I would say, I mean, just a big, you know, confirmation that revival is now yeah. is to see the hunger. Mm, okay. It's so different. It's mm. so, I mean, I'm shocked. Every city I go to, there, there are mm. people that get there at seven in the morning and the service starts at 7 p.m. Mm. There wow. are people that fly in from Romania Canada, Domin there was one service in North Carolina where, where somebody came from Rom Romania and one person came from Dominican Republic to wow. Fayetteville, North Carolina for the revival <laughs> service. Wow. And people are standing in lines for hours. Mm. People are cramming in, we're sweating so hot. I mean, it's probably like 85 degrees or hotter mm. and no one cares. They're sitting on the floor. Mm. They're super tight wow. to everybody. No one cares. And they're staying there for hours. Our service is at um, Five Old Church last three hours. Mm -hmm. And every, no one wants to leave. It feels like a blink of an eye. And not just that, but like so many people are receiving miracles. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the back of the room to people watching online, testifying as they're watching live. I just got delivered. I'm coughing now and things are coming out. And I mm -hmm. felt Jesus and I was just baptized in the Holy Spirit. The massive amounts of miracles at one time, mm. like the amount of power that God's releasing. Because we're used to seeing maybe a miracle here and yeah. there, but this is different. Yeah, man. So the massive amounts of miracles and testimonies and lasting yeah. testimonies, yeah. people testifying months later, that they're still free, that their whole family is transformed, mm. that their family members have come to Jesus. 
There was one service in um, Texas that I ministered at Rockdale near Austin. And there was a mother and her two daughters came. And she has another daughter, but the daughter is a prodigal mm -hmm. and was like far from God and was at a restaurant across the street. She refused to come. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the mother starts manifesting demons and I call her forward. And I said, what, what, is there something you need to renounce? And she began, like God put on her heart out of nowhere um, at that service, a memory of when she was a child. There were people who did uh, witchcraft rituals mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. her. As a child, she remembers it as a young child. Mm -hmm. And God put that on her heart, like that was the door that was opened that is why you have bondage and your daughters, mm -hmm. passion generationally. Yeah. So she renounced those things and I declared that curse to be broken and immediately her and her daughters fell to the ground and they were coughing and demons were coming out and they were set free and they praised God after just fully free. And they just mm -hmm. testified, you see that, that was a few months ago, I think like October around then. And they just sent a video testimony that they mm. are completely free and their life is so different. And they always felt, the mom felt like she's supposed to preach and she never could. There was always a block, in, like a blockage in her way. And now she, she preached for the first time and like she could feel that it lifted and mm. they've been ministering to people and praying for people and even seeing deliverance happening for people as they pray for the first wow. time. And um, the prodigal, right after they were delivered, you see that generational curse was broken off of her as well. Because mm. as, as long as it was broken off the mom, it broke off of the kids. Mm -hmm. Even a different revival service that I had at, at Fivefold Church, there was one sister, one woman, who a curse was broken off of her. And her sister was in a different state and she, she felt something hit her, like the power of God hit her. Wow. And she decided, I think I need to watch Apostle Catherine's live. She's live right now. She sees her sister there being prayed in that moment. So mm. she was set free and both of them, their sons had demonic nightmares and those stopped after that. Oh my goodness. Both of them, they would have um, headache, headaches and just trouble in their head and minds and that stopped as well. So wow. back to the story of what I was sharing of mm. the mom with the many daughters. So the prodigal came back to Jesus. All of a sudden she was open to Jesus. She got saved wow. right after the curse was broken. Mm. And she's free now and loves Jesus and is serving God with them now. Wow. Praise God. So just crazy. extraordinary miracles and mm. intense hunger that's making people fly from different countries mm. just to encounter Jesus in one, mm. one night. That's so cool. You know, I have, a, I have a personal testimony of your ministry as well, and I actually started a revival based on a revival I went to that you did in Dallas, the Glory Revival, back in September. And so uh, my brother, my daughter, and I, we all went to that and just really experienced the power of God there too, like never before. I remember not wanting to leave and God telling me, I brought you here so you'd take this back home and start revival where you are. And so God really convicted me that I was hunting and chasing revival, but I was also called to carry revival. Yeah. So for someone else like me who's yes. called to carry revival, what would your recommendation to them be of, you know, how do we go from this personal revival that happens, right? Where we're revived and everyone around us is getting it, everyone around us is getting delivered and set free and it's powerful. How do we take that and how do we bring that to our own city, our own towns, and how do we start a revival there? So the thing you need to know is that Jesus wants to use you if you are willing. If you simply want to please Jesus, to obey him, if you have a heart for God's people to be free, Jesus is calling you. Amen. Jesus Amen. is calling, many are called, few are chosen. He's calling you yes. and your yes, your obedience, your surrender makes you a chosen one. He's calling you. He wants to use you. Many people think they, that they can't be used by God because they don't consider themselves a good speaker. Or maybe they don't have the looks, the charisma. You know, they look at like big preachers or something and yeah. think those are the chosen ones. But God says the fisherman's the chosen one. Come on. Yeah. The tax collector mm -hmm. is the chosen one. The disciples he chose were ordinary average Joe people. Yes. They didn't even know much of the Bible first when they were first chosen. You don't have to know like the whole Bible to start being used by God. God will teach you. Yes. God wants people who really know his heart, yes. not yes. the religious stuff. Yes. God wants people yes. who are selfless, who have a heart for God's people, not people with egos who are selfish that care mm -hmm. about their own platforms. Mm -hmm. God will use children, old adults, man or female, if you had a horrible past like Apostle Paul did, or you've been just pure loving God your whole life, he wants 
wants to use you if you have a humble, pure, childlike heart. And I have been amazed at how God is serious about this, about wanting to use his people. Amen. Because I haven't, I've been surprised because I haven't seen that. I've seen like, oh, one big minister here walking in anointing and one big minister yeah. here, but not like the body really walking in the power yeah. of God. Yeah. This is happening now. This is another huge sign that revivals now and a lasting revival where God's restoring the Acts Church to the body of Christ, yeah. not just a revival where some miracles happen and then it fizz, fizzes it's out. out. Yeah. There have been so many people have, who have received impartation while watching my lives and coming to the church services. Yeah. Um, they've received impartation and now they're casting out demons regularly. There is a 12 year old boy who has just this <laughs> precious pure heart to see people set free and he just loves God. And he's just been watching my lives for months. And I prayed for him one time, one-on-one -on, -one, on the live, and he was set free on the live. Yeah. And he received, I received impartation to him of anointing. And like the next day or so, he's decided to go live. And he starts inviting people his age, middle wow. schoolers, and they begin to manifest demons wow. and were cast wow. out of them. And he's doing this regularly now, this 12-year-old mm. boy. There's <laughs> a 17-year-old girl, same story. She's been watching the lives continually. She's, I, I had shared with her, like when I prayed for her one time, I see God using you to have like revival meetings in your school. She started doing revival meetings right after that. 17-year-old girl, girl preaching in her high school gym Oof. to anyone who would come, even on her Christmas break. She just kept going. Wow. Oh, she sure. organized a field trip that's gonna happen soon of busloads of high schoolers coming three wow. hours away to Fifold Church in LA. Oh a 17 year old. Wow. This is how she's spending her time. That's amazing. This is her heart, you know? And um, she received impartation as well. She's been watching the live. She came in person a few times to Fifold Church. And it's been a, since August that she's been watching. And all of a sudden, um, just a few weeks ago, she started uh, speaking life into her younger sister who didn't know Jesus and who was having nightmares and was tormented by demons. She mm -hmm. starts just speaking life and love over her, just the word of God. Yeah. And as soon as she did that, demons manifested in her little sister who's nine, I believe. Wow. And she commanded the demons to go and they left her. And the little girl, her sister says mm -hmm. that she felt Jesus touch her back. Oh. Oh. And so she went from not knowing Jesus to be delivered to feeling Jesus knowing Jesus. Amen. And mm. so, she saw demons cast out through her by the power of God. And now she's going live continually and it keeps happening on every live. This 17 year old girl, Amen. there's a 60 year old woman who's pastored a church for many years, 20 something plus years with her husband. And they haven't mm. seen the power of God move much at all. Mm. They never saw deliverance through their ministry, but she hungered for that. She hungered mm. for more and she was searching, she was seeking. And one day she found my videos on Facebook live and she said this is what I was looking for so then she started after her service in Redlands California ended after her service ended she drove about an hour and a half two hours to fivefold church in this past June mm -hmm. June 2021 she started coming every single week after her church service without fail and one day she just came forward like I want what you have I want to see people mm -hmm. set free in my church and my community too I want God to use me like he uses you so she received impartation there mm -hmm. Three weeks later, demons started trembling in her and her husband's mm. church and were cast out by her. Now mm. her husband's operating in the power of God and setting people free as well. So now mm. every week they're seeing deliverance in oh, their goodness. church as well. These are just some stories. Yeah. There's mm. so many more. It's like countless now yeah. of how many testimonies there have been of people simply positioning themselves where God's power is because that's his system of releasing anointing. Yes. Elijah to Elisha. This is a principle. Yeah. Yeah. Moses to Joshua, mm -hmm. Apostle Paul to Timothy and all of his disciples. That's just God's system of how he releases anointing. Yeah. And so as, as these people have just positioned themselves mm -hmm. under the flow of anointing and served and so just been committed to the work of God doing mm -hmm. what God's calling them to do and, and listening to the lives, listening to the teachings, just taking it in and learning how to walk in authority, watching you know deliverance take place how do we do this yeah. um now they're receiving it and walking the power of god and this is mm. just a recent shift we've seen like this started to happen a few uh a few months ago maybe four or five months ago like fast 
you know, first of all, we were just seeing it happen and not hearing stories of impartation and people walking the power of God. But just a few months into like the revival that we've seen since May, we started hearing these testimonies. We started, actually, it was actually, I take that back. I think it was one, I just remember there was one month, the first month of these revival meetings, there was one guy who traveled from Miami. I didn't pray for him one-on-one. -on -one. He was just there. He watched his sister be delivered. He came back to Miami that day or that week and um, prayed for two different people and demons were cast out of them. And he'd never yeah. seen that before. Oh. So um, we saw that testimony and then the others started trickle in. And now there's been a shift where it's like, we keep hearing these testimonies of God just using person after person. Mm. But when you wow. see the hearts of these people, you, all, you see all the same thing. These people are not trying to have a, like a platform. They're not you know, yeah. caring about Instagram followers. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're not caring about how they look. Like they genuinely just have a pure heart to be used by God and to see people set free. Mm -hmm. And so you can position yourself where anointing is, you can pray yeah. fast, do all that, but God won't release that anointing to you unless you have the pure, childlike, humble heart. And if that's your heart, God will yeah. use you. Revival is now and God's gonna use you. Will you release a prayer over the people yeah. that they hunger for God and that they carry what you carry? Will you pray for the viewers? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, God. God's ready to use you right now. Revival yes. is now. And Jesus yes. just means serious business. He wants yes. to free his people. Yes. He wants to heal his people. He's ready to release this power to you. God mm -hmm. wants to use you. Yes. So if you have this pure childlike heart, God's ready to use you. Humble yourself and watch God move through you and astound you. I release this anointing to you for you to walk in the power of God, for you to cast out demons and heal the sick. In Jesus' name, may people's eyes be open through you. May people encounter the true Jesus. May they know his love and power mm. as, as he flows through you and touches others. I declare revival to spread through you in your church, in your city, in your country, now in Jesus' name. And I release protection to you, wisdom to you, that no scheme of the devil can stop mm. you. No Pharisee religious spirit can stop you. Yeah. May you be strengthened. May you be built up by the Holy Spirit and empowered. Receive this anointing mm. now. You are a revival carrier. Go yes. spread this revival yes. fire. Amen, amen. This is a wonderful show today. I'm so amen. glad you came back. I'm so blessed to be Amen. here. Amen. Thank you for coming, Candice, as well. Thank you for having me. What a blessing. And we're so glad that you joined us. So may this be the day you rise, rise up, up in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name.